day, everyone. I'm at the dentist right now. My son's being worked on. But it's important I get this content out to you. So today, Ryan Atkins from the Spartan Games. Let's talk about the Spartan Games. So like I said, I've spoken to a couple of women. And by the way, I think it was really smart of Spartan. I thought it was great that they gave you guys all this great content that they asked you to share more. I thought Grant did a phenomenal job. Uh, I think Spartan has had some misses with the let's bring someone outside of OCR in to maybe do some stuff. And sometimes Mm -hmm. it's people that aren't very good or don't know the sport or don't really care. Grant is beloved already. We like Grant. He was at the last Spartan Games and he did a good job. Yeah, he did a really good job. Yeah, Grant was great. Um, so we got to see these things. So from an athlete perspective, from your perspective, uh, overall, I guess, how do you feel about the events? How do you think uh, How do you think the variety, the type versus last year, I guess? Let's start there. <clears throat> well... I think last year there was better variety of events. They had some really short events, some really long events, and kind of everything in between. This year it was mostly shorter events. The longest event was the trail half, and that was an hour and a half. So, I don't know. That's still endurance, but it's not really like... It would have been cool to have like an ultra event where you're out for five or six hours or something, Um, whether that be, you know... an ultra Spartan or an ultra mountain bike or an ultra run or, you know, something cool, an ultra strength event where you're doing whatever for hours. That'd be cool. You know, do like 20 rounds of deck fit or something pretty rad. Um, so in that respect, there's kind of like less variety. I think, uh, I think they were trying to cater it, but they're trying to make it more exciting or like nobody wants to, but you don't really end up watching six hours of footage of people running through the woods. They cut it into a couple minutes, show you the highlights. Um, so I think they were trying to bring it, uh, you know, make it a little bit more suitable to some of the athletes that don't excel as much in the ultra arena, which is cool. Um, the last year they had two Spartan crosses and two DECA products. This year there, there was only one of each. Um, which I think was a good move. Um, one less event overall didn't really change things. You know, eight events, nine events, ten events doesn't really matter. Um, you're competing at least twice a day, so it's all good. Uh, Big Bear venue was pretty awesome. It's nice being like in a mountain, not everybody's staying in like the same big crowded room like last year. Uh, <laughs> at, at, at Joe's, you mean? Yeah, it was kind of weird. It was like a cool vibe, but after a few days, you're like, I just want my own space. You're like on the clock for like 24 hours, you know, every day, sleeping with these people, eating with these people. So it was nice being in like an actual condo where you can go after the race and sit down and do whatever. So that was good. Um, Yeah, compare, contrast. What else? Events were good. Uh, I think the shooting event was really cool. Um, It was really, like, different. It's great learning a new skill on the fly and then having to apply it. Um, Everything else was, you know, it was cool. I like the pacer test. It was different. It was something, you know, unique to see in, like, a setting like that. Uh, And I think they did a good job of, like, involving the – um, special warfare people and the U.S. Air Force and stuff into the into the games without having it become like too much of a you know it looking just like a recruiting tool, which is like basically what it was. The whole games was sponsored by U.S. Air Force as a recruiting tool, and you know, good for them. It's a cool idea. I think it's awesome to like say like, oh, we have X number of dollars to spend on recruiting. And it's like really creative for them to, and obviously it's probably Spartan's idea too, for them to like agree to it saying like, oh, this is going to get in front of these people. It's going to be like a good demographic of active, you know, people that like doing gnarly stuff. And, um, 
hopefully get you know them involved. So that's cool. You know, Ryan, one of the things I really like about you, which I've said more than once, other than your fantastic hair, is you you leave it out there when you finish a race, regardless of the distance, you look like someone who spent. And I can't say that about all the athletes for whatever reason. Um, doesn't mean they're bad people, but I feel like there's few people that I go, wow, he left it out there. So anyway, so for, you know, buckling in, strapping yourself in for four days, uh, how do you choose to pace your body? Well, it was five days. Five we days. The, the Spartan race on uh, Sunday. <laughs> I forgot about that as a little precursor. And then actually I flew back to Toronto and did the beast here. So I dude, I, I know. Hang on one second. I was switching my, my chair. It was too, uh, too low. Six, six days out of seven racing. So today, yesterday and today it was nice to just not have to worry about bringing yourself up to your max <laughs> a few times a day. Um, what was the question? How is the load? How is the, how do you, how do you pace yourself day one? Like, okay, I got to be here for four days. Right. Oh, and I'm racing the thing at the end of the week. Every event is everything you have. Every no matter, event, no matter what. Kind of, yeah. Basically, unless you have like a huge lead and you can take the foot off the gas. Um, every event is because the points are so tight, and you never know how it's going to shake up in the end. You don't really know what the events are going to be in the end. You don't know if you're going to get injured. You don't know, you know, if someone's going to have an amazing performance at some point in time. Um, yeah, and I actually did get injured. Like my, like last night, I could barely sleep because I couldn't breathe because my ribs, the intercostal um, muscles, are are all uh, like torn right now. So like, I couldn't breathe properly from after the wrestling on. Uh, it really sucked and made things harder. But yeah, it's like every event is super tight, and you have to just punch it for all you have every time you compete. And then once it's over, then you worry about recovering, getting ready for the next event and then going. So not really any like holding back at any point in time. What is this about the intercoastal waterways? What's, what's going on? <laughs> um, yeah. When Mac landed on me in the wrestling, Oof. <clears throat> he um, hurt me. Um, it kind of like tweaked my neck pretty good. I couldn't, I couldn't really look up for the next day and a half, but the the worst thing was the the muscles in between your ribs, <clears throat> which are called intercostal muscles. Uh, just like a muscle strain, like you would strain your hamstring or you would strain your calf, those muscles got strained. So now it's like every time I breathe or every time I like move my hands upwards or or touch anything, it like hurts. So those last last. Uh, that happened on day two, two, two or three. I forget. Did you? I day three. Started day three. So it was the fifth event. So there's four events after that. Um, so that's when that happened. And then I was, uh, yeah, it just made things harder. Just, I don't know. It sucks when you can't breathe properly or grab things or lift things up. Did you minor in physiology? <laughs> uh no i actually sat in on some uh physiology and human kinetic classes when i was in uh in university which was kind of exciting but um i'm a student of my craft there was uh actually one of the guys there tim smansky the wad doc he's a chiropractor so he uh he kind of like worked on my neck a bit for me and checked me all out and stuff um and that was his diagnosis so i'm just repeating what he said but oh, okay yeah, he was a uh, he was an awesome guy. What another stab through Woodsy's heart! Not only did you not get invited, Woodsy, but got replaced with a different <laughs> chiropractor. <laughs> wow! Yeah, a chiropractor who can not only wrestle better than you, but can shoot better than you too. Ooh, wow! We're just checking boxes. What should we call Woodsy? Should be the the Woods Doc. What should we call Woodsy? The Wood Doc. <laughs> The dock of wood, the OCR backmaster. Hmm. Actually, you know what? That's actually a good name for him because, like, he lives out in the woods, right? And he like he has like 
a new lake house with like a dock. So like the wood dock. I don't know. I feel like we could do yeah, a lot with that. Wood. Mm. He won't even hear this, by the way. So we, we could say anything we wanted about him. Wood wood duck. Maybe he's a wood duck dock. Hmm. I'm looking at this little duck in this app and getting inspired. You're, you're so fascinated. A hunter mentioned it last time as well. The StreamYard duck. He's wearing headphones. This is like, I don't know if he's like jamming out or he's, you know, like air traffic controller or like what this duck is up. Do you get, do you get ads for this when you watch videos? Mm, I don't really like even look at ads, so I couldn't even tell you what ads. But I you get. have to watch for a couple seconds before you hit skip, right? On a YouTube video. Uh, I always get like VRBO ads. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Cause like, I don't even think I've ever used that website but it's like it knows you travel yeah the ads are like this was the moment when you unplugged like your daughter-in-law got off her phone and like actually talked to you and it's like this lake and it's all misty and epic you're like (laughs) this is the table where grandpa (laughs) that one yeah played checkers with yeah um that's hilarious uh i get those i get spartan plus i get a lot of spartan ads um what else do i get a lot of i get a lot of Streamyard because i use Streamyard. it seems like they should send it to somebody else like i'm already using it yeah right you're like bro i already paid for that it's like if like it would make no sense for spartan to send me spartan ads because like i don't know i'm gonna come no matter what so right but i think it knows that i watch I watch a lot of videos about obstacle races, so it just serves it to me. Because you're such a honk. I, <laughs> wow, I haven't used, I haven't heard that term long. You know, Ryan, I, I don't know how you handle this, but sometimes I want to turn my mind off, and I just I put on YouTube and I'll watch videos, but then I start thinking about like my job, like oh, I'll be watching a Spartan video, or I'll be watching a video and thinking, how could I make something like that, or whatever. Like it's hard to it's hard to turn off. Right, you almost find something that's like just like therapeutic and unrelated like a video of someone making like macaroni necklaces or something like like, like, like there's no relevance to ocr right like some people use social media to just kind of check out like stacy isn't really on it during the day like i am she's doing what she's doing and then at night she'll just kind of scroll and whatever and so for me if i'm scrolling at night what am i seeing all i'm fucking seeing is you ryan and every other person me. Right. Everybody's like, hey, so I was in seventh at the spear throw and then I, <laughs> and then I dug down to my ancestors. Remember, we had that famous quote. Yeah. And then I, I missed my spear and, and then I arrude and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. And lightning struck just in front of me. There was a momentary rapture and right. found new motivation deep in the cackles of my soul. Right. So that's all my feed is, is just more and more and more social. I mean, more and more. And then for some reason, these white women and their fucking stories. I don't even know why I see all those, all those fucking reels. Yeah. Are you upset because of the race of the women or are you upset because of the content? Of the race of the women? Well, what you say mean? you preface it with saying there are all these white women reels. It, it is. Go look at my I can't help it. That's what I'm fed. So if they were Latino women, would you be <laughs> somehow more okay with it? Don't try to get me canceled. Don't get me canceled on here, Ryan. I'm kidding. Um, I get a bunch of stupid real stuff too that I just... Yeah, for a while it was really weird. It was like this lady um, talking about inappropriate things uh, on like every reel that came up and I was like, I need to block this because like sexy like sexy time stuff yeah like just yeah weird things so there's no filter anymore on this world we live in there, uh, yeah dude i have kids too wait till you have kids wait till you have kids ryan atkins hopefully by then it'll like re- the filter will come back they'll be like we went so far the wrong direction that we need to start you know, locking this up a little bit, and preserve some of the innocence of the youth. Yeah. You know, I said I was going to talk just about the Spartan games, but uh, I like talking to you so much. And I, I do want to know uh, how it was. You had your first Canada Spartan race in how long? Over two years? Oh, man. Uh, it's been a it's been a hot second. I don't know. Over two years. Yeah. 
I think, yeah, the last time I raced in Canada was uh, Highlands. So, like, north of Toronto again, but, like, not the same venue. Probably 2018, maybe. Right. So, how was it to see uh, Monsieur Hébert, Monsieur Azar? Well, I get to see Sam all the time. Um, he, he lives not that far from me. So, I actually stayed with him the night before I flew to Tahoe at his place in Montreal with his lovely fiance. Uh, so that was great. Um, but yeah, seeing all the crew, all the Spartan Canada people, it was awesome. And it was actually a totally different product. Um, normally in the past, Spartan Canada has always been like, like it'd be like Spartan USA and there'd be like these big metal obstacles and everything super professional and blah, blah. blah. And then you come to a race in Canada and it'd just be like a bunch of plywood screwed together. And that would be awful. <laughs> um, so they actually like are the same now. It's like all the obstacles are the same. It's all the same trussing. Actually, a lot of the obstacles had never been used. So I was like literally the first human to like touch a lot of these obstacles once I was in first place. Um, so that was cool. I was like, ooh, this is such a, you know, I don't think I've ever been the first person on, you know, Spartan obstacles. They're like glinting in the sunlight as I like ran over them. It's a very, uh, you know, just deep, epic moment for me. But uh, yeah, it was great. It was insane amount of vert. Like we did probably around 6,000 feet of climbing in this beast, which is probably more than um, like kilometer for kilometer. I think it's as much or more than Killington is uh we just went up and down the mountain the whole time so that was great uh and what else yeah. it was cool i was actually thinking about this and i could be wrong jack bauer would have to chime in but oh i don't boy. think I've, i don't think i've ever been beaten by another canadian mm. in an obstacle race mm. and as i was running behind jesse he passed me at the spear early spear which is kind of rare he passed me there. Um, as I was running behind him, I was thinking to myself, I don't think I've ever been beaten by another Canadian. So, And so you were not going to let that happen today. <laughs> well, no, I don't really. Uh, but not today. Not this town. This week. Not on my watch. Blue Mountain, your home. Aru, aru, aru. Let's Man, race. Go. Yeah, exactly. You weren't going to let Miss, Monsieur Bruce beat you. In fucking, um, in fucking Canada, man. That wasn't going to happen. Yeah, not on my soil. Um, but yeah, he was actually running really well, Jesse. So that was cool to see. Uh, crushing it. So sadly, no Mick. That was a bummer, though. No Mick. Um, yeah. And then I think I somehow came like sixth or something in the series. Which, <laughs> who knows if there's any money for that, but. There is. You make a few. You made a few hundred bucks. Nice. Your boy Aaron won two grand. I know. That's awesome. Uh, whatever happened to what's his name? Remember the guy that won every race? He was the Hobie before you of Canada. Whatever happened to him? I don't know. I don't know who you're talking about. Um, he was. He won every single one. Adam Quitco, if he's listening, is saying the name right now. He was like Mr. Spartan Canada. Is it Benjamin? Oh, Benjamin BMB. So apparently he's getting back into running and he's like training again and stuff. Benjamin and Marie Bouchon. Right, Benjamin Morin Boucher. Right, so close. Yeah. See, how could you forget? Why did you forget? Well, I don't know. There's a bunch of like these freaking crazy fast French guys that just no. But he was he was like I said he was the Hobie. He was like unbeaten in Canada until yeah. you came along. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Hopefully he'll be racing again next year or something. He's in the military. Um. So he always has like crazy schedule and deployments and this and that. So. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, what about Claude and Marco? Will we ever see them again? Where, where are they off to? They have a baby now. Oh, good for them. <clears throat> and they're living in Quebec City, just outside of Quebec City. Um, yeah, now that COVID is on the on the downstroke, hopefully we get to hang out with them a bit this winter. Let's maybe do some skiing. With my newfound shooting ability, maybe I'll try some biathlon, and then I'll have to pick their brains for it. Well, hang on one second. I'm sending this guy this thing. Sorry, this didn't this didn't come out right. Um. <laughs> I do want to ask you about the shooting. Um, so many pew pews. So, so many pew pews. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah. Do you know anything about the shooting event? Uh, I've I've since well I watched some video and I've since spoken to a couple of gals who said that maybe the uh, it was one of those penalty didn't quite fit the crime situations maybe they could have handled that a little bit better I heard some rumblings about that so they announced the event on the night before um, big secret event. Um, and originally, it was a 10-second penalty. Oh, no. It was... Okay. So, it goes... You shoot 10. Or you do a thing. You shoot 10. You do a thing. You shoot 10 on a smaller target. You do a thing. Then you shoot three magazines with three... <laughs> I don't know if it's called a magazine or... A... Anyways, the little bullet holder things. Right. You I don't know anything about guns either. Yeah. So, you have to reload on that one. So nine shots. So a total of 29 shots. So originally it was, you have to make five of the 10. You have to shoot until you hit five. Of so your just 10 shots. Bink, bink, bink. Yeah. And then once you hit your five, you can go. But if you didn't hit five of 10, then you would receive a 30 second penalty, I think. Okay. So that was the original structure. So then they changed it to, you have to hit every shot and for every miss, you'll get a 10 second penalty because basically they like announced the event and then all the endurance athletes kind of went like, dude, we've been like running and doing endurance things all week. Like we need to throw these like guys a freaking bone here because, you know, this is their jam shooting, blah, blah. We need to make the penalties harder. Um, so there's like more of a equitable playing field. Um, so they did, which was great to hear. And Ultimately, it didn't. It was like too little, too late. It was like maybe it should have been thirty seconds per miss, or maybe it should have been a minute per miss, or something. Uh, or maybe they should have made us shoot harder guns because the guns were like, I think, pretty easy to to shoot uh, and be accurate. Um, but it was super fun, regardless. Did you have lasers? Like, did you like for the scope? Was it a laser scope? Uh, so there was like a little red dot in the scope. So it wasn't like a laser on the target. Like no one else would see it. Just you would see it. It was like, so that helps. Yeah. The other, the other point disappointment that I, that I've heard so far was the, uh, so many initials, not the pacer, the, what's the other one past past, uh, and that, and that, a zero in one category meant a zero for the entire event, which to me seems really not fair or smart. Well, so the whole point of the past test is that you're supposed to be able to pass it in order to en enter the military. Right. So I think they just, try they were trying to stay true to the standards of like the test and how the test is like, defined and stuff so um i don't know fair or not that's how it was um but yeah talk about punishment not fitting the crime like so you got a point like they did this weird point set up to see who would win right but you got one point per pull up one point per sit up and one point per push up but as we all know pull-ups are generally a lot harder than sit-ups and push-ups. So it was like, not like it wasn't really smart to kill yourself on the pull-ups and then um, not be able to do as many push-ups or sit-ups, but whatever. It was the same for everybody. So no, I, I understand. And I do understand well, you're bringing these military aspects. And, and again, we understand it's a sponsor, it's a recruiting event, but entrance into the military to be ready for battle is different than well, we've actually like sort of curved this because it's an actual competition. So we're going to give them this flavor, but let's not fucking DQ them because they, that's just to me, it seemed a bit much to me, yeah. my personal opinion. So I literally said, so like for the run, for instance, it was a 10 minute and 20 second time cap. So like to get into the military, you have to run your mile and a half in 10 minutes and 20 seconds. Um, and then for every two seconds below that, you earned a point. So if you ran your thing in 
10 minutes and 20 seconds, you'd get five points. Um, anyways, so what, what was that? What were you just doing to the camera? That was weird. I tried to do five, but the camera is too close. So my suggestion was that if you went over the time period, if you ran 10 minutes and 30 seconds, you'd have points taken away. Um, like you'd get like a negative point thing, which would still like, you know, up, they would upset your point system and your scoring, but you wouldn't like have these athletes getting DQ'd. So I said that to them and they're like, Oh, great idea. We should just DQ them if you you don't do the standard. And I was like, no, that's not what I said. And they're like, yeah, that's what we'll do. Oh, geez, Louise. um, So some of the athletes didn't. I I don't know if I can say that. So you'll have to tune in and find out what happened. Well, I listen. We know some people got DQ'd. It just, again, it seemed it's it's for me. It seemed a bit much, especially when we know that, like, you did the swim test with, like, some wonky stuff there, like. Like they wouldn't have a fucking wetsuit in the swim test for the military. So that's a little different. It's just, again, I understand the concept, but let's not, let's not, let's not go to every single letter of the thing. That's all. Well, that's the other thing. Like the run, we had like a pretty sizable uphill on the run. It's supposed to be on a flat track. And there was like a freaking massive wind, super windy that day, probably 25 mile an hour winds. So, um, Big headwind on the way out, tailwind on the way back. But like that plus the big uphill on the course made the time slower. So then it made it harder to hit that standard. And then the swim, it was like there was like foot and a half, two foot waves like smashing you <laughs> with 48 degree water. So normally they do it in a pool. Right. Um, granted, no wetsuit, but uh, I would have much rather have done it in a pool. And, um, you know, had not had any massive waves, then um, do it outside with those wetsuits and the really cold temperatures. Listen, I think last year, the program itself, the TV show turned out great. I think this year I expect it to be better. Like I, I was not, I was very critical before the event was aired. I was like, oh, we, we'd seen, we'd heard, blah, blah, blah. They're going to turn it into a reality show, yada, yada. But this time around, but the show itself ended up being great. Like, yeah, yeah, it was funny watching people throw buckets and whatever. But like at the end of the day, the show was good. And I think I expect similar this time. I think it's going to look really cool. And I think if that can, you know, get some eyeballs to our sport, great. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, totally. It was a fun week. It's fun meeting new people, hanging out with old friends and um, competing and stuff. One thing I'll say is that I was really impressed with VJ. VJ. Uh, I've been critical of his approach in the past, but, um, he is a really super solid athlete and, uh, and like just maybe it's when he's, um, not in his element that he's more humble or something. Uh, but yeah, he was just seemed more down to earth and more approachable than in the past during the event. Well, I think that's huge of you to say, Ryan Atkins. Love you, Veej. Mm. Of your of your current, I'd say strongest competitor currently, right? Yeah, probably. I I had to come in here, private office. Something about HIPAA laws. Listen, that's what it takes. That's what it takes to get you this kind of gold, like Ryan Atkins. How about that little bit at the end? A little love for Veej? Gotta love that. Another reason to love Ryan Atkins. Hey, keep it locked here. We've got lots and lots more of this kind of content to come. Spartan Games content that is, but also other fun stuff. You know how we do. Also, World's Toughest Mudder, a couple weeks away. I will be there. So excited. Lots of ORM stuff. Lots of stuff in the TM channels. Keep it locked. Love you. Miss you. Mean it. I've got to run.